the chemistry between Harley Quinn and the Joker is just amazing. I, it, it's just such a great movie. I know! No one understands why it's an amazing See, movie. What? This is like Oscar. It should have yes, won all the Oscars, Yes, and Batman's honestly. in it too. I mean, what's... How can you even argue with that? Such it? a great movie. Oh my gosh. That's weird. It's getting... Do you feel that? It's getting cold all of a sudden. No! No! Not the prequels! Welcome back to Steal the Show. I know that in my absence, there's been absolutely no content on the channel for the past couple of months, but we're finally back at it. I think me and Sam are really ready to give you guys some great quality content once again. Sound effect. Hey, welcome to Steal the Show's best, goodest, baddest, and worst movies of 2017. Uh, instead of doing traditional top tens this year, we're just gonna kind of split them up into four categories. The great, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Woo. Okay, so first up on my list, I have Split. Okay, okay. I think we saw it together. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No. James McAvoy in this is just amazing. Like, he, I don't know how he isn't getting nominated for an Oscar, but this, he plays 24 distinct personalities, and it's just an amazing uh, thriller. Plain amazing. Yeah, the twist at the end. <sighs> it's unfortunate that this came out in January, because otherwise I think McAvoy would be getting more of the... Oscar attention. Definitely deserves it. Uh, it's a great performance. A really good movie. Definitely. This one you might not agree with entirely. I have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I think this movie upped practically everything from the first movie. You got a better villain, a lot more character stuff. All the character interactions I think are great and that's what makes this movie better than the first one in my mind. Uh, the action is just in good, as good. The special effects are also just as good. Um, I think it's a great space romp. Definitely think it's it's uh, it's a good movie for sure. <laughs> um, but what I found, I rewatched it, and I found like a lot of the first half was a lot slower than I remembered. But it definitely has an emotional impact on me. At the end, I found myself like a little little man tears, little, little man tears there. <laughs> Next up, I have the Lego Batman movie. <laughs> Heck yeah, you know I couldn't go through this list without a Batman movie. Probably one of the better superhero movies this year. I didn't think it was that great when I originally saw it. I was like, this is a, this is a solid movie. I rewatched it at home and there's a lot of jokes in there that definitely went over my head at, in the movie theater. I didn't catch the first time. They mock every single iteration of Batman and it's just hilarious. It's a great movie, I agree. Um, probably the best DC movie of the year. Uh, Maybe one of the better Batman movies ever made, honestly. I mean, it fires on all cylinders, and I just don't have it on my grades because I think it drags towards the middle. Maybe I should rewatch it, who knows. You definitely should. Right, I have Blade Runner 2049. Did you not see this? No, I didn't. Okay, I was gonna watch it, but I saw it was like three hours, and I was like, I don't have time for this yet. Yeah. Because, you know, I want to sit down and enjoy it. Yeah, that's, that's the only issue, I think, is that it is three hours, and I think that Seeing it in the theater was probably the best way to do it because then you're in total silence, total darkness for the whole three hours. But it's a, it's still a great movie. If you've got time and, and want to be just immersed in this sci-fi world, that's it's just, uh, it's really good. I don't know how to describe it other than go watch it and it's good. Uh, next up, it's a movie that you didn't see. It's a little movie called The Big Sick. Oh, that's right. This is a great movie. If you have Amazon Prime, anyone, definitely go watch this movie. This is a great comedy. Pulls at the heartstrings. I usually don't like uh, romantic comedies, but damn, this is a good one. But it's definitely just a great movie you need to go see. I'll think about it. That same sort of train, movies we didn't see, I have The Disaster Artist, True Story of the Room, and Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. Uh, God, the Franco brothers in this are phenomenal. I already really liked them as actors, and they do really good jobs with their roles as uh, Greg and Tommy. Especially James Franco plays a really, quite a complex real life character, and he plays them really well. And it's amazing. The dude's just a complete mystery. Nobody knows about it. Nobody knows anything about it. It's, uh, it's a hilarious movie, and it's a good drama worth watching. Especially if you've seen The Room, probably makes it better. Haven't seen that movie. I really wish I did. That was one of the movies that I 
extremely regret not seeing, but I will someday get around to it. Probably also my favorite movie going experience of the year. Next I have War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, this one, when I watched this movie, my mind was blown about how much, like, non-human of a story this is, but how human it, of a story it was. Yeah, I, I shed a little tears, I shed oh, a little yeah. tears at one point. Not even the ending, it was like in the middle, which was weird. Towards the beginning, I think. It, towards the beginning, yeah, but I, <laughs> great movie. It was a great finale to the trilogy. Uh, I was a little let down when I first saw it, because I thought there was going to be more war, because that's in the title. But I think after thinking about it more, it's definitely, it's still a great movie. It's more like the darker parts of war, not the battlegrounds or whatever. But yeah, definitely emotionally satisfying, great story, great film. Get Out was, uh, it was good. <laughs> it was a great horror thriller. Um, great political sort of movie. Although I would say most great horror movies are sort of political, so. It's, it's fantastic. Um, I don't know that there's much else that needs to be said about it that hasn't been said already. It's getting the award nominations that it deserves, which is phenomenal. It's awesome. Um, Jordan Peele does a great job. All the actors are great. Uh, it's a movie that makes you think, and I think that's why I liked it so much. Yeah, uh, Jordan Peele did a great job with this movie, definitely. Uh, he does a great job of handling the horror aspects, kind of the tension building, and also the comedic relief. Yeah, this yeah, movie was great. funny, too. Uh, probably maybe unintentionally at points, but uh, definitely handles everything very well. It's not to say it was a comedy, because it's being nominated as a comedy, which was a little weird. It's definitely not, but it's a horomedy. It's, yeah, horomedy. New it's genre. Wow. Of course, I gotta have on my list Logan. Alright, that was my next one. Logan, like, it got me teary-eyed at the end. Okay, let me, let me preface this a little bit. I hate, I, no, nah, I don't really hate, but I strongly dislike most of the X-Men movie. I've never been a fan and never really engaged, really. But this movie turned me around. Logan is goddamn amazing. <laughs> just the amount of human that's in this story is just phenomenal. Yeah, I fully agree. I never really liked the X-Men movies either. I think Days of Future Past is the only one I really like. And that one's got Wolverine at the center, so serious connection there but this movie is even without the superhero aspect it's just a really well-made movie and I definitely one of the better superhero movies of all time next I have my top movie of the year which you didn't see it comes at night a, a supremely underrated movie just it's a really tense story it's kind of a short movie if I remember right I think maybe an hour and a half but it's very it's very punchy um, it's not there's no slow moments it's it's like a slow build horror, and not with any like horror monsters or anything like that. It's it's more like just a psychological horror thriller, and I think a lot of people misinterpreted it, but it really is a great movie, and if you saw it and didn't like it, you might want to watch it again under a different lens, because it's so well made, and it just tells a heart-wrenching story. Yeah, I've only heard good things about this movie. It is. Um, you know, don't let people tell you otherwise. They didn't understand it. Back in the last year, I have, I think it's on both of our lists here, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. This is a phenomenal movie, definitely one of the greatest Spider-Man movies. A great... Or the greatest? The greatest? Maybe. Up for debate. Just a great blockbuster, even, oh, and yeah. a great movie. I even found myself, like, there's one scene at the end where I was like, damn, this is... Hurt, it hurts my heart. <laughs> Marvel movies recently have been getting a little on my nerve, you know, just because like there's so many of them and they're all kind of the same big, big explosion type stuff. But you know, this brought it back to the ground level and made me enjoy it. Yeah, I think a big part of that is Michael Keaton as the Vulture, who is great. I think uh, best Marvel villain of the year, and he's up there with like Loki for my best of all time. Uh, brings a lot to the movie, and I do think that this is on par with the original Spider-Man for the best Spider-Man movie of all time. <laughs> Spider-Man 2. <clears throat> so I have a part of a movie. Uh, I think most of The Last Jedi is a great movie. I know there's large chunks, maybe a 30 minute chunk in the middle that is far from great, but I think a lot of the twists and turns and a lot of the very creative stuff that they do with this movie does warrant it being placed at least partially on this list for me. I would, I'd put part of it in there. I'd put the beginning and the end in there. Okay. <laughs> the entire middle part, the entire subplot is gone. They could have 
cut that off. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah everyone's agree. heard it, you know? You could cut that out, and it'd be a better movie overall. Not change anything. Totally. Agree. I'm thinking about going to go see it again, and go for the bathroom break. Uh, you know, with... Ooh. I feel like that would add to the experience. Good strategy. Last up, I have Baby Driver. Ooh, okay. Why isn't this on your great list, Steel? Look, I was a little underwhelmed, not gonna lie. It's still a great movie, I agree. I just didn't put it on this list because I don't think it's as great as the other movies that I have on the list. It is great. It's well made. The editing is fantastic. Uh, it just doesn't reach those heights for me. Okay. Sorry. See, it didn't really, you know, reach that level until I saw the behind-the-scenes commentary. If you haven't seen it, you've seen Baby Driver, definitely go watch the behind-the-scenes. How they made the sound in this movie is amazing. And then you go back and rewatch the movie, and you notice a thousand things that you've never seen before when watching it. It's just like a whole different experience when you watch it after the behind the scenes. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry to stop you on the way out like that, but, you know, we forgot a movie on here. How dare we? We forgot Dunkirk. Great movie, visually stunning, and you know what? We'll just put it right there. Boom. There we go. Perfect. Now it's... Now it's done. Woo. Cue the music. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Okay, now we've made it to the spot on our list. It's not great. It's not okay or bad, but like, you know, it's it's good. It's, it's a, a solid movie. It's a solid movie. It's a buy on Blu-ray. Sound effect. First of all, I have Only the Brave, which is the true story of these firefighters who are the go uh, the wildfire, they stop the wildfires and stuff. Uh it's got a lot of great actors in it. It's got Josh Brolin, Miles Teller, probably some others that I can't think of. But it's a really good true story, and I think a very intriguing movie to watch. Um, it's aesthetically, it looks really nice. You got fire and trees, you know, orange and green. Uh, great movie. I didn't see the movie, yeah, but uh, it, it seemed, I heard, it was a lot of teary-eyed at the end. The it theater was, was, it a little, was a little man tears at the end. Oh, yeah. 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 On my list, I have Lady Bird. Okay. Uh, this is one of the movies I hate Oscar bait so much, but, you know, this, I hated the movie starting out, and I ended up really thinking it was good. Not great, as everyone was saying. Some people were saying it's, like, the greatest movie. Do you see on Rotten Tomatoes, it's, like, a 98? Yeah. That's not true. i put it more at, like, a 70, but it is a solid good movie, and definitely some people are going to relate to it more than others, and I definitely really related to it. I have a horror movie. Annabelle creation. So, no secret, the first Annabelle is garbage. I haven't actually seen it, but I don't really care to. It's a great movie, it's really well directed. What he does is he puts a lot of scary looking things in the background so you don't know if something's gonna pop out or not, and it's, I love that tactic, and um, it's a truly terrifying movie. This is a third Annabelle movie, right? Second. Second? Yep, it's I... also a prequel. That's weird. I haven't seen either of them, but I've heard bad things about the first one, great things about the second one, so maybe I'll check it out. Yeah, definitely do. Uh, conjuring Universe is doing really well. Uh, it's creeping up on the Marvel Cinematic Universe a little bit. Keep an eye. Next, I have Good Time. Okay. Good Time was a... Good Time. Don't do that. No, come on. That's <laughs> what you were going to say. No, it wasn't. Right. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Okay, but this is a very unique movie. It's definitely not everyone's, you know, cup of tea. I didn't really enjoy it, and then I, you know, I let it dwell a little bit, and then I was like, that's a, that's a good movie. Yeah. It, it leaves you with an interesting feeling, for sure. It's not something that a lot of movies do. Um, yeah, I really appreciated it for what it was, although you probably will not like it. Yeah. But I think that that's the point, in a lot of ways. Atomic Blonde. Um, I thought this was going to be, like, female John Wick, which I was excited for, and it really wasn't. It was a lot more of a, a suspense thriller. Less action than you would think, but the action sequence in the middle is, it's, oh, it's so good. It's one of the best of all time. Uh, Charlize Theron or Theron or however, I don't know. She's really good as, as, I don't even remember the character's name either. Look, the plot's weird, okay? But aesthetically, and the action sequence in this movie made it really good, and a good time for me. I said good time again, wow. Wow, that's good, thank you. This was on your great list, I had Get Out. Uh, definitely a, exactly what you said in our great video, but 
or a great sequence, but uh, you know, it didn't hit me. I felt like it wasn't my audience. I understood why it was a great movie, but you know, it didn't hit me the way like I didn't really relate to the fear. Okay. But um, definitely a great movie. Not definitely a good movie. Solid time and definitely enjoyed myself. Okay. See, I've enjoyed this more on each rewatch, and I've I've seen it four times now, which is ridiculous. But um, all were in separate scenarios with like different groups of people. Like, hey, let's watch Get Out. I was like, I just saw that literally yesterday. But it's whatever. Um, it's a really good movie. There's a lot there to, to digest, and I, I can see where it's not on the greatest of all time list, but for sure it is for me. I think you have this one on there. If I'm peeking over at the list, Power Rangers. Power Rangers! Woo! Yes! I don't know why this movie is 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 not talked about as much as it is, because it's like it's just it's a great high school movie, high school coming of age movie. And then at the end, it's it's a pretty solid superhero movie. They don't mesh super well. No, not at all. But um, I I really really enjoyed it. And some of it's just so stupid, it's enjoyable. Like yeah, but that I mean that's the I grew up on Power Rangers right. and like that's what it was. It was so stupid, but you were like that's cool. Yeah, exactly. I think we both came out of this movie loving it, and I definitely acknowledge it's not a great movie, but it's I love it. It's it's still one of my favorites from the year. Yeah, I definitely thought it was a good movie for sure. Nothing nothing like nothing yeah. groundbreaking or anything, yeah. but it was a fun movie definitely. Uh, going into this, Steel was hyping it up <laughs> since like 2015, but like I thought it would be awful, and I left the theater like super pumped. It was what I think of it is is you know for the first hour and 20 minutes, it's a great like Breakfast Club type movie. Yeah. Uh, definitely the campfire scene was the changing point for me. I was like, this is really good. And then, uh, you know, the, the end part there was like a, it was like a, uh, I mean, yeah, it had to be, it had to do that eventually. Right. So. But it, it, it just could have been worked in a little better. It could have definitely but, meshed um, well, but it didn't. <laughs> definitely hope we see a second one of these. Hopefully, yeah. It was great. Kong. Okay, so do uh, I. Yeah, I rewatched this. I, you know, I thought it was just okay in the theater, but I, I rewatched it again. And it's like, it's a solid, fun movie. Yeah, it is. Um, this Godzilla Kong universe, I think, is doing pretty well so far. Yeah, um, Godzilla was good. Kong is better. I'm gonna say, it's a lot of fun. The characters are fun, even though some of them are just cannon fodder. But um, yeah, I watched this on an airplane, and it's a lot of fun. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, definitely just like, you you know, you could tell they weren't taking it seriously. And right. They were like, unlike Godzilla, where they didn't show you uh, Godzilla to like the very end, mm -hmm. they were like, you know what, first 20 minutes, we're going to put him up there. We're going to put Kong at the center point. This is a Kong movie. Definitely they had fun with it, and I had fun with it also. Yeah. Um, Hitman's Bodyguard. Did you see that? I, I did, yeah. Okay, yeah. See, I thought this was a fun movie. Um... It, it was a pretty standard movie, but I oh, think yeah. the, the relationship between Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson is what elevates it for me, and also um, it has a lot of like actual themes of like relationships and stuff, which was not what I expected, and I give them props for doing that. It's a little bit of a throwaway movie, but definitely one of the better ones. So Yeah, this is one of those movies that I went to and I was like, you know what, I have a solid hour and a half to burn, let's, <laughs> let's burn it, and it was a... Uh, it was a solid, fun time. Uh, I definitely think, I hope that Ryan Reynolds doesn't get into this role of just playing Deadpool over and yeah. over, because this was what that movie was. Yeah. He was Deadpool just without the mask. Next up on my good, you had it on your greats, Guardians 2. Okay. Definitely a good movie. Uh, again, I rewatched it, you know, a little slower than I remember. Right. Um, definitely doesn't warrant the great title, but a solid, fun film. I can see why you think that too. Um, it doesn't. Uh, it's not as fresh as the first one, clearly being a sequel. But um, it does reuse a lot of the elements of the first ones. Wonder Woman. Okay, that would be on mine. I just didn't. It was yeah. Okay. For time's sake. Okay. Okay. I'm uh, this wasn't a great movie, but the only enjoyable DC movie. Oh yeah. For <laughs> okay. Sure. I like Man of Steel, but in recent memory. It's okay. It's fine. But like Wonder Woman, it was a great. Great movie for half of it. A uh, lot of good themes in there. Yeah. But then the end just, you know, it became another DC movie and it just 
fell flat on its face. See, I don't mind the end too much. No, I hate it. But the beginning for me, I don't like uh, the island oh, stuff. I don't, I don't like that either. That's what I'm saying. Like the middle part of the movie, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. And then you have the beginning and the end, which make it just a good movie. Yeah, I agree with that. Next, I have It. Yep. Uh, I really liked this when I saw it, then I thought about it more, and I really didn't enjoy it as much. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was, like, honestly, like a 6 out of 10. Like, it's good. Okay. So, I saw this, the first time I saw this, I loved it. Um, I was, it was really scary. It was, it was funny. Um, I saw it a second time with... A group of college kids like like it was shown at the college and so everyone was like laughing at stuff and everything so it wasn't as like scary and intense and I was able to look at it more as just a movie and it's, it's all right it's pretty good yeah it's just it's just good yeah when you're not like after I think it loses some of its oomph after the first time that's one thing I'd say it's definitely not like a, it's definitely not a great or Maybe even a good movie, but it's enjoyable. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I'm excited to see a second one. I'm excited, so. definitely, yeah. The last one here I have, you didn't see it, but Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond, a Netflix movie on my list. Ah! This is a great movie. No, this is a good movie. That's on my good list. This is a good movie. Definitely, like, at the end, I was, like, I was almost tearing up at the end. This is a, this is really, like, a must-see for anyone who, like, like seeing behind the scenes stuff and mm -hmm. just seeing what you know the crew went through it's just an amazing movie it's on my queue someday someday you'll someday. watch it yeah well that's the end of our good list let us know if you agree but thought we're it gonna was good thought yeah. it was a good time yeah but we're gonna get right back into our bad list next year Twenty seventeen. Were there a lot of them? Probably. Did we see a lot of them? No. We don't feel like wasting our time or money. We're college kids now. We're broke. Honestly. We do have a couple. A couple that we why did we see them? Who knows, but we did, and we're gonna we're gonna give our list. Sound effect. First up for me I have Fast and Furious yeah. seventeen, whatever, eight. Yeah, that one's eight. on mine. Yeah, we this, saw that together. We, this was. Oh, we did. Yeah, see that we we uh we have a video for this. I don't uh, have we uploaded it. I don't think so. In video incoming. We'll we'll be uploading our prom asking video. <laughs> that was a fun experience. It was. Uh, so Fate of the Furious though, this was a boring ass movie. Uh, oh my god. Mean? Uh, this was, it was boring like. The action was even bland. It reminded me almost it's getting to this Transformers point. I've never liked the Fast and Furious but okay. series, but like it it's fun. Like seven was good. I liked seven, yeah. Uh five was good that yeah. I remember. I think six was good too. Eight was just boring. Yeah, it was like they're they're going too far. Like in seven, the fun stuff comes from the ridiculous things they're doing. But in eight, it's like it's weird, but they're so ridiculous that it's not fun. It's not a fun movie. Like, sitting through this, I was like... So, uh, basically, the person that I asked to prom, like, ended up leaving after we asked him, because she was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta go to Wisconsin or whatnot. And uh, I was like, damn, I wish I left with her. Yeah. I'm sitting there, I'm just... Oh, and his girlfriend is, like, doing her homework during the movie. That says a lot about the movie. It's just so boring. Arts of the Caribbean? Uh... Don't remember what the subtitle is. Might as well be, why are we still making these? Yeah. Um, you probably didn't see it. Good I, on ya. No, I didn't because I don't like to waste my time and yeah. money. Yeah, that's fair. Um, we don't pay for movies. I don't know why I keep saying money. No, but gas money? Gas? Yes? All right. Um, I, I, did, I had free time, and it was like 7 o'clock. I was like, hey, Drake. Drake's my brother. You want to see the new Pirates movie? And he was like, I guess. So we saw it. And it's every other Pirates movie, but but with more CGI. Uh, it's weird. I don't know. I heard Johnny G Depp. I heard he's not fun anymore. No, it's this. It's just him being like, look at me, I'm an idiot. He's getting his paycheck now. He is just getting his paycheck. Yeah, he's just dressing up, clocking in, getting his paycheck. It's a, uh, it's just a bland movie. You know, again, not terrible. And for fans of the franchise, yeah, a lot of sure. people liked it, but not me. 
I are a wimpy kid, the <laughs> long haul. Uh -huh. I hyped this movie up yeah. all year. You, you know, this was gonna be the Oscar movie. Yeah, I I don't know, man. They had an entire new cast. I was like, maybe. Yeah. This is a complete made-for-TV movie that was released in the theaters. I think and it's awful. It's really bad. Uh, not a. There's definitely. I laughed once or twice, surprisingly. Okay. But uh, you know, most. This is one of those movies where they have a setup for a joke, and then it falls completely flat, and they leave a space. They leave a space in there for you to laugh. And it's really weird. It's just really odd. Really bad movie. Everything, everything. Uh, I haven't even heard of that movie. Okay, it's about. It's based on a book. It's about this girl who's allergic to everything, so she can't go outside, and she meets this boy, and it's like, I was like, pretty. I was like, okay, this. Pretty good, like teen romance drama stuff. As far as it, you know, as far as those go, then at the end there is a twist that you see coming from a mile away. And the whole movie, I was praying that they do not follow through with this twist that I think is coming. And I was praying that if they do follow through with it, because it looks like they're going to, it's something quick and they brush it off. No, it's a big thing, and it really undercuts the whole movie. I think. I, I I just left the movie disappointed, and it's got an hour and a half maybe of, of good content, but it's it's just disappointing. I don't know. I, I feel like they they ruined it. Lyrian, the <laughs> oh, city of a thousand a thing. planets. Yeah, I totally forgot that existed. We reviewed this movie and we never put it up on the channel. We bashed it though. Yeah, we bashed it because it was really had a good concept, really good beginning. It has one of the greatest scenes that in movies in a long time. And it just goes into a bland movie. Yeah. Really boring. It, yeah, I agree. Um, had so much potential and it just fell flat on its face. It's just worse because of the potential it had. Cars 3. I didn't see it. All right, so this is the one that I thought was gonna buck the trend, you know? This would be like a good movie, like Lightning McQueen's gonna get hurt, things are gonna go wrong. Eh, that happens in about the first three minutes of the movie. And then the rest of the movie is him training to get back to racing but oh no he's not very good at it anymore or whatever and then again i thought it was a fine movie like it was it was like okay this is decent but there's sort of a twist at the end that again it makes no sense and it undercuts everything that happened and it's just like it felt to me like it was setting up for cars 4 which like does anybody in the world want cars 4 but it it just ugh. death note I <laughs> didn't see that. I don't know if you saw it, but yeah. Uh, after I found out that the movie came out and was bad, I added the anime to my queue. So was the anime good? Oh, oh, it's I've on your queue. It, but like, I'll watch uh, it. Steel's queue of I'm never going to watch things. I will. I have like point. 30 things on my queue that I'm not going to watch. Oh, man. But Death That's Note should have been one of those things that just stayed there. Uh, it has a good concept, but I heard it does the anime so wrong that I can't give it a, a good or even an okay just because, you know, it's so not true to its source material. Beauty and the Beast. I don't know if you saw that. I did, yeah, it was okay. on Netflix. Yeah, uh, Disney, what, what are you doing? Uh, what do you mean, what are you putting it on the bad for? I thought it was, like, fine. Uh, I think it's bad because the original, which it's pretty much an entire carbon copy of, is one of the best movies of all time. I haven't, I don't agree with you on that. But... Really? Okay, well, I agree with me. Um... <laughs> And, uh, this movie had little to nothing going for it, in my mind. I think visually it's fine. Um, Emma Watson is very bland, not gonna lie. All, all the acting is kind of bland. I don't really remember anything from it. And I just didn't feel any magic, and I feel like Disney is just pumping these out to make millions, no, billions of dollars each time. And people are falling for it, and, and I have to be the one to stop them. So... Okay. That's why it's on my back. Whatever you say, it was <laughs> fine. You can watch it, it's fine. Yeah, it's worth it. Justice League. I hate this movie. Really? I honestly, I hate it. You said it was okay. Everyone was saying it's okay. It's not a good movie at all. I'm sick of, like, these bland superhero movies. This was the textbook definition of let's, you know, MacGuffin it. Yeah. Like, let's, here's one thing we gotta do. We gotta make a universe, so let's go <laughs> do it. And then they threw in the most bland villain, the most bland story. They ruined the death of Superman. They kind of threw that away. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's pointless. The whole movie is pointless. The one positive I do have to say is that when the characters, when the superheroes are just like talking with each other, 
those are the greatest scenes in the movie. When they're actually doing stuff in battle, there's no teamwork there. They're just going at them. They don't, it's not like a superhero movie where they learn their lesson, you know, where they gotta work together to defeat the superman, supervillain. No, it just turns into Superman beating him at the end. Yeah. I don't care if there's spoilers. You should have seen Justice League by now, or not. It doesn't matter. Um, see, I like this movie better than you, but I agree with everything you just said. So, I think the only... I, I, it's not a good movie. It's in my yeah. movie, in my huge list of decent, but um, I, I like the characters. It's, it's great characters in a bad movie, I think. No, and that's all you have to say, is the characters. Nobody cares about the characters. I do. <laughs> but Fine. <laughs> but, like, I, I agree. Steppenwolf is... I'm gonna say the worst villain, maybe, ever. Oh, ever. Yeah. For sure. He's, he's terrible. Um, God, Superman pulverizes him, doesn't he? At the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't watch trailers anymore for movies. So at the beginning, I was like, I wonder who this guy's gonna be. And he just shows up, like, one second. <laughs> he shows up in, like, right at the beginning of the movie. I, the whole thing at the beginning just set the movie for me. Yeah. Like, the Batman scene at the beginning. I liked that, was that just, scene. No, no. No, you didn't. Come on. I like I'm Batman. telling you, you didn't like that scene. I like the aesthetics. Part. You know what? We'll get into it in our own review, but it's okay. a bad movie. Yeah. I, I do think it has more redeeming qualities than Batman v Superman. Um, so, it's a little bit... Oh, yeah, it's better than Batman v Superman. It's a little bit of a positive direction for the universe, but... But Batman v Superman for me was like a three. Oh, it's a three for me, too. This was like a five or yeah, even yeah. a four, maybe. Yeah, it's a five in mine, I think. Okay. That's the end of our bad list. Uh, you know, join us again, which is in a few seconds, for, for the, the ugly, ugly list. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Don't see these ones. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah. This is going to be a fun video, though. Yeah. So, Woo. stay tuned. Stick, stick around. Those who stuck around for our ugly, bless you. Honestly. Because these are bad. Yeah. Steel, what do you got to get started right now? All right, so I'm going to start with the small movie on my list. It's called The Recall. So it was released at the movie theater that I work at because we have this thing called a Barco Escape screen, which is basically three screens, and it's like sort of panoramic. We got The Recall because The Recall was made specifically to be on a Barco Escape screen. And my God, it's it's terrible. The Oh, God. From start to finish, it's laughably bad. Um, it opens up, and it's by Entertainment Studios, which is the most vanilla name I've ever heard. From there, it just gets worse and it's worse. Wesley Snipes is in it, and... What? He's the best part by far. He's like this, like... He's, he's basically got the force. So it's about aliens, and it's... It's... It's made like a horror movie, but here's the twist. The aliens are abducting people, and then turning them into super people and then putting them back on Earth. So like... That's an odd premise to sell. The end of this, but you don't know that's the premise until the last 20 minutes, because no. the end of the movie is like trying to set up their own superhero universe, which is ridiculous, and it's, everything is bad. The actors are terrible. With it being in your ugly list, I don't think they're gonna get that universe. I doubt it. I don't know if you saw the first on my ugly list. I only have two, but you know. Baywatch. I this movie was awful. Watch. <laughs> don't watch it. It's so bad. Or like, they don't watch it. Yeah. Right? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Dude, this movie was awful. Uh, I love Zac Efron. I love Dwayne The Rock Johnson. But both were just phoning it in here. Zac Efron didn't want to be there. The Rock usually goes around trying to sell these movies. Trying to sell, you know, he likes to be a part of the process of movie making. He did not want to sell this movie. He stepped out of the limelight for most of it. It was awful. Nice. Every joke falls flat. You know, I had a few chuckles, but it was it was awful. If you if you want to look up the fire CGI in this movie, it's <laughs> like saw it in the trailers. Yeah, it's like yeah. on par with like a student film. Nice. It's awful. Yeah, I I walked in on this and saw a little bit of it, and all I saw was some dude getting strangled by the rock with like like a SpongeBob theme. I don't even remember that. That was a good scene. I think a good twelve seconds. The Mummy. I didn't see it. I'm so happy. Yeah, you're lucky. Oh, God. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I rewatched my most anticipated movies for 2017 list. Did you say The Mummy? I did, unfortunately. Oh. This is the only movie on that list that turned out bad. And and it turned out bad. I mean... Whew. I just heard it was awful. Yeah, Tom Cruise is just a dick the whole movie. 
his best friend character is super annoying, and then he dies and he turns into a zombie. And he's the same exact annoying person, but now he's a zombie. I love that actor, though. Like, he's... Uh, I love him. Like, he's a funny guy. Okay. But I heard what he he just wasn't good in this movie. Not in this. No, he's obnoxious. Um, Russell Crowe as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Could have been cool, because those are cool characters. Nope. The only distinguishment between them, he turns, like, green when he turns into Mr. Hyde, and then he's... Yeah, he's all angry, that was pure setup for future movies, by the way. A lot of this movie is. There's a whole organization, we'll call it S.H.I.E.L.D., that is setting up for future movies, like The Creature from the Black Lagoon and Frankenstein and the most obvious one, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I don't know. I was excited for that. I was excited for this movie. It had a good trailer. And everything good in the movie is in the trailer. So if you just watch the trailer, you get the gist of the movie, the better parts. I haven't even seen the trailer, so... Oh, it's a pretty good one. The movie's terrible. No so, say your voice gets higher when you realize you're saying something that is a lie. It's a good trailer. This is not true. It's a, it's a good movie. It's a, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. <laughs> Transformers 5. This is an F you movie. Yeah. This is a... This is the studio, Michael Bay, everyone involved just throwing a middle finger up on the screen and saying... You're gonna come watch this. Yeah. I refuse to pay. I snuck into this movie. The first time I saw this movie, <laughs> they shut off the movie on me because I was the only one in the theater. And they were like, nah, fam, we're not wasting our money on you. This is an awful movie. Like, the aspect ratio changes. Which yeah, that's so annoying. It gave me a headache. Like, what the heck? Yeah. It gave me a headache because, like, it'd be in widescreen for a second and then it'd be in IMAX for a second. And I don't. I like get the same scene. In like, a, like, they'd be just talking randomly. too. I have no clue. How these movies are still getting made you enjoy these movies like i understand you like the explosions but at some point you got to draw the line this is that line they are going to abuse us <laughs> until we have no money left yeah and this is an offensive movie too like i think the characters are just terrible people like um cogman oh yeah cogman yeah. the psychotic robot like I, I, like, I don't remember specifics, but I remember thinking, this is a terrible person that you should not be showing children on the screen. And it's like, uh, Optimus Prime is a dick now, right? He's just... For five seconds. Oh, for, for you know, his entire screen time, yeah. The Ten whole, seconds. Ten. The big fight between him and Bumblebee that was so publicized. About a minute. Yeah, about a minute. Maybe. Not a good minute, because it cuts back to them and then back to, like, probably Mark Wahlberg or something. I don't, yeah. I don't remember. One thing I didn't realize before I watched this movie... Uh, you know, okay, so the fourth movie focuses on Cade Yeager. You know, he's a family man. He's a, yeah. he's a father. He's looking out for his daughter. This one, they throw the daughter out, and you just you just have Cade, and you're like, you're a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they have him, and I'm just like, you're an awful person. Like, I love Mark Wahlberg, but, like, this character is, like, yeah. why, are, why would we root for him? Even the action in this movie, which is usually the redeeming factor in the other movies. I just thought it was underwhelming. Yeah, it, was, it was just meh. Yeah, it's meh. As you're watching Transformers 5, you're wishing you were watching Transformers 4. Yeah. It's just bad. It's, it's the worst in the franchise. Awful movie, if you honestly. can believe it. A lot of awful movies this year. Yeah. A lot of ugly, not gonna see movies. Yeah. Luckily, you know, we miss a lot of them. If you enjoyed our list, or list, Please, you know, like and do the subscribes and stuff. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, and whatever, comment man. if you disagree, because you probably do. Yeah, we like discussion. Yeah. We like discussion. If yeah. you like Transformers 5, though, and you can... And tell us why the OA is them. such a great TV show. Yeah, tell us why the OA is a great TV show. But definitely, if you enjoyed, you know, check us out again. And remember, steal, steal the, the show. show.